9.42, talk about inspiring things now, some music here that you might find a little inspiring. NASA spacecraft Juno has captured some of the best ever views and the sounds of Jupiter as it flew 2,600 miles above its surface. Yes, Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Nichols from the University of Leicester is a member of the Juno mission's science team. Now, Charlie just mentioned muse, music, was it music? Well, it's sound, it's sound isn't it? Yeah. yeah should, we, should we have a little listen to what he's talking about, yeah. first of all? Is that the sound of Jupiter? Well, technically it's the radio waves of Jupiter, but it's been changed into sounds so that we can hear it. And what sounds, right? If you're going to make up sounds of space, then that is what you'd make up. Are, were you saying that there, so if, if we were there, we wouldn't hear that noise? That's right. It's actually the sound of the magnetic field of Jupiter wobbling around and generating radio waves that are picked up by a big antenna that's on the spacecraft. And it's just been converted into sound so that we can hear it and understand it. And the change in the tone of that is related to the magnetic field of Jupiter. What are you learning from what's being sent back? So what we're learning from Juno is the story of the formation of Jupiter. Um, Juno is getting really close to Jupiter and so we can look at how lumpy the magnetic field and the gravitational field is. We can take the pictures from really close and we can take some fantastic observations of the auroras on Jupiter, the polar auroras, the northern lights. And that tells us overall about the formation of Jupiter and therefore the formation of all the other planets. Now as we look through these pictures here, I think we are going to, going to go to the, these are the infrared images. So just explain what we're seeing there. So the infrared is the heat coming from Jupiter. Jupiter's still hot from its gravitational collapse four and a half billion years ago. And that heat is trapped in Jupiter like a potato. If you heat it up, then it stays hot for ages. So Jupiter is still radiating that heat. And it's not doing uniformly. You can see that some areas are yellow, some areas are dark, black. And that's telling us that the heat has been absorbed by clouds. So it's telling us all about the atmosphere of Jupiter. So how much of the science regarding Jupiter up until this point had been guesswork? Well, um, we've only had one orbiter of Jupiter, um, and that was in the, the plane of all the moons of Jupiter, in the equatorial plane. Um, and we've had a few flybys of spacecraft on the way to other planets. Uh, and we've taken lots of photos from Earth. Um, so I, for example, use the Hubble Space Telescope to take pictures of Jupiter's auroras. But we've never been over the pole like this, so this is a really unique vantage point. Um, and what we're learning from there is, is great stuff. You know, we're seeing these storms on Jupiter the near the North Pole that don't really look like the banding elsewhere. Um, and so we've got, you know, this is just the start. This is just the first taste of the great science to come. And uh, talk to us a little bit about Juno itself, because this is an adventure in and of itself, isn't it? Be because y you followed it not knowing, truthfully, hoping that it would come up with stuff when it's there, but all sorts of things could go wrong. Absolutely. So the real tense event was uh, the orbit insertion event on the 4th of July. I was lucky enough to be in the States for that and it was so tense in the room. You know, we were all sitting there, sitting forward on our seats. Um, and the reason is because we just didn't know what the space environment was like at Jupiter. It's really radioactive, really nasty for the electronics. And so that's why Juno is built like a tank with big sheets of titanium to protect the electronics. But, you know, we had no idea whether it was going to survive that encounter. And have you seen anything so far that surprised or shocked you? What's really made my jaw drop is the auroras, the image of the auroras that we've seen, and it's just so detailed and beautiful. I could sit and stare at that for hours. And Juno remains, you're talking about the environment, it's in, it remains intact as yeah. we speak now and, and carries on its mission. It will. Uh, it's got an 18-month mission. It's going to make 37 of these orbits around Jupiter, 37 dives in, getting the data and then coming out again. Um, at the end of that, it's going to have to be deorbited into Jupiter. That means it's going to be sent down into the Jovian atmosphere and it will burn up. Oh, so and wow. will they be able to follow that journey down with a picture as it disappears? Hopefully, if the instruments survive, uh, the, the limiting factor here is the radiation. The instruments will probably um, be fried eventually, and so that's why it needs to be uh, in this orbit to go into Jupiter. 
We don't want it to um, potentially contaminate Gany Ganymede or Europa, which are potential hab uh, hab habitable uh, worlds. Um, and so we need to make sure it ends up in Jupiter. Hang on, sorry, habitable worlds? Um, yes, there's, uh, we think there's water under the, under the, uh, the surface of Europa and, and Ganymede. Where there's water, uh, there's potentially life. There we go, we'll leave that. <laughs> I'm not sure, not sure we there. can really leave that, but we're <laughs> going to, aren't we?